morning, everybody. Here I am in my lucky red jacket on my lucky red mat that I never thought I'd be standing on and here to talk to you about my favourite subject. So as a mother and a grandmother, as you've just heard, I've had a lot to do with children over the years, but I've certainly had much to do with teaching children with hearing loss to listen and speak when I started Hear and Say some 22 years ago. So now I have my old idea for the new world, which was no, a no-brainer for me to find. So I want to tell you all about it. And the title of my talk is called Hearing Loss in Babies is a Neurological Emergency. A hearing loss is the most common disability in newborns born today everywhere in the world. More than 670,000 children are born with a hearing loss every year. And all of those children have a, dis a problem with their auditory brain development. They have brains the same as children with normal hearing, but because they haven't heard in utero, they've had about 20 weeks of auditory deprivation. Did you know that when a baby with normal hearing is in utero, they're able to hear quite a lot? It's soft and it's a bit blurred, but they're able to tell their mother's voice from their father's voice when they're born. But they've had so much brain development that they can also tell where the beginnings of words are and where the ends are, which words are the important ones and which ones are just the little joining up words. They can even tell things like the emotions that their parents are, are using in their voices and they can also tell their mother's favourite pop tune or her, her, um, her, her favourite soapy theme. So babies in utero really do have a lot of brain development and when a baby is born with hearing loss, the brain development is not nearly so great. So they're starting behind the eight ball. But guess what? Babies whose parents haven't talked to them enough also have the same brain deprivation. So with these normally hearing babies, there's also a problem because learning to listen is time bound. You can only learn to listen in the first few years of life. And the window of time starts to close around three to three and a half years of age. So it's really critical that we spend time with all children in these first three years. And what do we do with them? We listen to them, we talk with them, we play, we sing, we read, and we have fun together. That is so important. And the auditory brain pathways need to mature before listening and speaking can start to develop. And the areas that the brain uses for reading and for their whole future education also are set down in the same areas of the brain. So it's a very pivotal foundation that we have to set down. Untreated hearing loss in a baby is not only, it not only impacts on listening and speaking and also reading, but also on economic independence and safety, social inclusion and many, many other important factors. But luckily today, just like with little Tyler here, who suffered meningitis as a young child, we're able to treat these children today and the way we do that is using a cochlear implant. And to understand how this works, I'd like you to have a look at this beautiful picture of the ear. And if you see the purple shaded piece that looks like a snail shell, that's the cochlea of the ear or the part that's damaged in children who have the most significant hearing losses. But as we think the, the ears are the organ of hearing, we have to change our minds because these days, New neuroscience is showing us that it's the brain that's the organ of hearing and the ears are only the pathway into the brain. So in the 1970s, Professor Graham Clark started to develop a cochlear implant or a bionic ear and he, was, he did a lots and lots of work with his Tiger team to develop all the electronics that would, would see this wonderful device come into fruition. And he had a missing link. The missing link was what would he use to bypass the damaged hearing cells in the cochlea or the snail shell-like structure. So the story goes he was sitting on the beach one day, supposedly babysitting his own children, and he was pondering on this problem. And he picked up a shell off the beach and thought, now what can I push through here that will sit very close to the curves or, or the curls around this snail shell-like structure and that will sit close to the auditory nerve endings in the cochlea. And he picked up a blade of beach grass and picked it up and pushed it through 
and found that that was just the right structure to go through the rounds of the cochlea and that gave him the missing link which allowed sound to reach the brain. So with children today, if they have a severe, a profound or a total hearing loss, what we're able to do is to give them an electronic device which bypasses these damaged hearing cells. On the outside of the head, on the day of the switch on, we give them a microphone, a little speech processor and a transmitter which sits by magnetism onto the side of the head attached to an electronic device which is inside their head and it has a magnet in it. So sound is picked up at the, um, at the microphone, goes down into the mini speech processor, turned into an electronic signal, goes by a radio wave across the skin into the implant inside and straight down to the wire on the end of the implant and on the end of that wire there's 22 little electrodes which bypass the damaged hearing cells and take the sound. As soon as we switch the children on, they can hear. It takes the, the sound directly to the brain. The only thing is that the children have no idea what these sounds mean and that's where the hard work starts. And the important thing to know is that the hardware is of no use whatsoever unless we give the children the software that enables them to interpret the new sounds that they can hear. So to build the auditory brain pathways and to make up for lost time, we really, really have to develop these auditory brains using the most uh, available resource we have somebody who will be with them 100% of their waking hours. And guess who it is? Nobody but the parents. They're the missing part in the technology chain. And this is my old idea for the new world. Because without the parents, we aren't able to give the children the brain training that they need to develop. And guess what? It works just as well for children with normal hearing to use parent power to build their brain. And what we need to do is we need to give the children who have cochlear implants education to their parents so the parents can then go and train their brains all day long. It works just as well for children with normal hearing. If you teach parents to educate a child's brain, that child's brain is absolutely super wonderful. How can we take this magic of hearing to the children of the world? This is one of the things that keeps me up at night. Well, I think we need to seize the window of big opportunity. There's, we have at the moment a perfect storm happening, a perfect benevolent storm of technology, of neuroscience and the internet. What better time in history is there to try and teach the children of the world to listen better so they can learn better? So there's one other thing we need to do and that's to form partnerships to see this happen. And so partners like Hear and Say has, Hear and Say is the, the program that I set up, Hear and Say has partners like Professor Graham Clark, the inventor of the cochlear implant, and, Prof and Dr. Vinton Cerf, who's the co-founder of the internet as our chief internet advisor. And using partnerships like this, plus the perfect storm of technology, neuroscience and the internet, we're taking our programs to the world. We have 600 children and families here in Queensland Northern Territory and Northern New South Wales and we also have a big research and innovation program but we are teaching via the internet professionals and parents worldwide for collective impact. I believe that the 19th and 20th centuries were in many ways a battle for power but this century is the battle for empowerment but only if we're able to learn how to share so to help you remember my old idea for the new world, I'm going to tell you a quick story. It happened in Africa in 2004, in Tanzania again. My husband and I were riding in a topless jeep. We saw a beautiful lioness on the left side of the car. Suddenly on the right hand side of the car appeared two lion cubs, then three lion cubs. The lioness pricked her ears up. She didn't like this at all. She started to stalk towards the car and the next thing we knew, we, while we were still hanging out of the top of the, the roof, she jumped onto the bonnet of the car and there she sat. We shot down, sat down and tried to, to keep hidden and the, the lion just did not move. She kept her eyes right on those little lion cubs on the right hand side of the car except for one point. Over the full five minutes she sat there, there was one minute where she turned around and looked me straight in the eye. 
And what she told me with those beautiful, beautiful amber eyes was that I will protect my children to the death. And that is the parent power that we have in the world today that is largely underdeveloped because parents don't know their own power. Now I'm going to tell you the rest of the story. I'm going to show you a little girl called Zoe. Zoe's Zoe is going to hear for the first time and you have to watch for the moment where she stills in her movements coming up shortly and where she turns to see a puppet that's hidden in a box and when her parents speak to her for the first time. That was the moment she heard the word. Now watch, her parents are going to speak to her. She'll hear flapping. This is the first sound she's ever heard. And her brain is like a blank slate. And who is going to fill that blank slate? Her parents. So today, children like Zoe are able to converse with intelligent people hear about the great ideas, read and learn about the world, have optimal education, multiple life pathways, and if she happens to live in a developing country, she won't end up being the poorest of the poor. So I'd like to say in finishing that it is your responsibility as parents and future parents of the world, it's your responsibility to build a, a brain, whether your child has normal hearing or hearing loss. Because the only way that child is going to learn to listen, to speak, to read, to be educated is by you laugh, singing, playing, dancing, reading, talking, listening and having fun. That's, this is my old idea for the new world. Thank you. <laughs>